I've been working with two-color clay printing for the last couple of years, and generally you make a two-color model by having each color be its own model in your 3D modeling software. But more recently, I've gotten very interested in this idea of more fully sort of interlocking, interweaving, stacking, overlaying uh, one layer on top of the last. What's made this possible um, is a little bit more accuracy uh, in the printer that I'm using. And the big change has been that now um, this dual extruder printer has two independent Z uh, axes so that each print head can move uh, independent from each other. And while one is printing, the other can move up and a little bit out of the way. And when it's time to switch, uh, the second print head drops down a little bit and the first one uh, moves up a little bit. And so that simple change has made it a lot easier to very accurately calibrate the printer. And it has also allowed, um, allowed us to really get the color just exactly uh, where we want it and to have less uh, cases where one nozzle is dragging across the model in places where we'd prefer it not to do that. It isn't a perfect print here, um, but it is a huge improvement, and um, uh, there's always uh, more fine tuning that can happen. And so one of the things, one of the artifacts that you see um, is that there are some um, bits of extra uh, dark clay that keep on getting sort of snagged on the left-hand side of the print. And that, I think, is not a factor of software settings as much as it is a little bit of a difference in the two clay bodies. And so we um, used a white clay body and then added about 20% black ceramic stain to that white clay body to make the dark gray um, clay body. And so that addition of uh, sort of filler or color material did seem to change the behavior of that clay. Uh, the darker clay a little bit and so um, we'll have to work a little bit on um, getting used to that difference and accommodating that difference um, so that the two colors can behave just about the exact same way as they're being extruded and maybe to also be a little bit more careful in uh, the water content between them each but despite um, these small difficulties uh, i'm really happy with the way this process is working overall And so I'm excited about the potential uh, that this holds for making a um, different kind of texture and maybe using color in a different kind of structural way. And I think there's interesting potential as well. Um, if you think about one of these extruders not using a different color, but perhaps a different type of material, like a support material or a um, material that would be combustible and would not survive the firing so that this could be a process for making um, open patterns or lattices. And so as you go from a 3D model to a physical printed object, um, there's always uh, some surprising uh, aspects of the transition. And the pleasant surprise with this has been just how sort of woven and textile-like these textures have become. And I should be really clear that this is an extremely small print being made in this case.